there, it's Natasha and thank you so much for joining me today. Now I am all about the mindset of where there is a will, there is a way. So today's video is about whatever you have, we are going to make it work. We can make it work with whatever you have in your stash. So I'm going to show you three completely different methods of going about this card design today and this uh, technique, I guess. Now, one of my favorite stamp sets for 2021 is this Leaf Canopy stamp set by Altenew, but it is definitely still continuing to be my favorite. If you have watched my channel for a long time or if you're new here, it is important to know that I do not discriminate against a product uh, based upon what year it was released into the market. So I love this stamp set and you will continue to see this one lots because it is extremely versatile. Now this is not a layering stamp set at all, but I love this look that kind of makes it look as though it is a layering stamp set. So I'm going to pop in a piece of white cardstock here and I'm going to pop these two on here to make sure that they are going to be fully on the piece of cardstock. And then I'm going to, I am using a stamping platform for this and I definitely think this makes it a whole lot easier. This is the Couture Creations stamp press and this is my absolute favorite out of all the big brands that I have tried. This is my favorite. Now I have the Minty Fresh and Overzealous Simon Hurley dye inks here and I'm going to do this little trick and I'll show you a couple of times uh, but I'm going to create more than this um, and I actually end up using these on other uh, projects as well. Now please ignore the fact that I'm going to use a finger dauber for the first part of this because I am chatting away here to my gorgeous uh, Mr. Three and Miss Six Year Old uh, children and they are distracting me, beautifully distracting me and just really interested in learning about everything going on. So I am talking here at the same time um, and I was clearly not thinking. <laughs> so what you actually need to do is just ink these up with your stamp pad just like a normal stamp and stamp them down. I use a little uh, pressure tool here but honestly, anything is going to work fine. Even your fingers are going to work fine. Um, it just gets a really kind of nice even layer and gets all of that ink to touch the paper. Now, it doesn't really matter if you get a perfect impression here. If you want to do another layer and make them a little bit darker, you can. It's up to you or you can skip this. And um, the second layer that we are going to add actually kind of clears up all of anything that might have stamped unevenly or anything like that. So it's up to you. But then this is the Minty Fresh layer. I love this color and I do love this when it's stamped twice. I really like that uh, sort of gray, greeny, tealy kind of color. Now here is the second color. This is overzealous and this is just a kind of bright green and this is where you are going to need your finger daubers. And all I do is go around the stamp and I am just going to touch the edges of the leaves, so the outside parts of them. I mean you could choose to do the inside parts, it doesn't matter, but to me this makes it look like it's almost too tone there's a bit of layering there's a bit of shading and you can go to town on the different colors that you might like to try the different combinations here this is a really really fun technique very very simple and you're able to do this with lots of different stamps that are not layering stamps but you can kind of turn them into layering stamps now I actually have a whole video about this um, that I did a little while ago I will if I can remember link it in the description box below the video too and I just really like this I think it gives a whole lot more depth and a whole lot more um, dimension to our really our one layer kind of images now this video is long today I am just sorry <laughs> I'm not usually known for releasing really long videos it's not my thing I like short sharp and to the point I thought about making this into two parts but I dislike two part videos uh, so I did just make it one longer video I apologize I know that uh, shorter videos are my preference to create so this video might be one that you need to save up and kind of sit down with a cup of tea perhaps. Um, but yeah, anyhow, I just thought that this was a really fun video and I love the idea that we can use exactly what we have in our stashes to create the look, no matter what it is that we have. Now here, I did just want to quickly show you that even though I'm using the Minty Fresh as the same base color as I did the first time around, I am using the Clear Skies color um, as the blue and then this gives the leaves a whole different look than it did when I added the overzealous color on top uh, before so even just using a different top color can create a whole different look so this is a really really fun technique and I love those gorgeous results there now this very last one here I have sped this up a whole lot just so that we can get through it nice and quick I am using the clear skies color as a base 
And the midnight snack color is the top layer there, which is just kind of a darkish, navyish blue. And this is just an absolute, this is probably my favorite combination of doing this technique. I absolutely love how this ends up looking. So this is just a really quick way to create uh, layered, non-layered stamps into layered stamps. And then I just want to show you one quick little hack as well when it comes to die cutting these out. Now this is one of those stamp sets that I went ahead and purchased the coordinating dies for, which is a rarity for me. I don't have many coordinating dies at all, but for this stamp set, and especially since uh, how often I end up using it, this was a good investment for me. What I do is I get a little bit of low tech tape and I put both of those stamps on the one sheet for a very good reason. So I'm going to line up the top one and these line up super 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 simple pop down a little bit of mint tape there just to keep this one in place and then I'm going to do the exact same thing with the bottom one so pop the bottom die down there as well add a little bit of mint tape just so that it is completely lined up and then you can see that I have four different sheets here and actually I had another few off camera that I created as well just because once I was going with this technique I was off I was enjoying myself so once I have popped down the two uh, dies kind of individually then I get another piece of the low tech tape and I'm going to tape together those two dies so that when I take this off, when I run it through the die cutting machine and I take this off this one, I'm able to take off both of those dies together and because I didn't move anything, didn't move the stamps or anything when I re-stamped them, then those dies, how they are sitting at the moment, are going to perfectly fit across all the other pieces of paper that I have. And that means I don't have to line them up over and over again. I can just pop them on and know that they are going to line up perfectly. So you can see here, all I do is pop these ones out and then I peel off all of that top die thing. I'm going to get all of the mint tape with it. This always comes off perfectly without ripping the paper. I don't need to save, the, save this part of the paper because this is scraps. So I'm not trying to save the paper, but I just want to make sure that those dies are in exactly the same place. I take the next one and line them up on top and I am good to go again until all of these are die cut. Now, I want to show you the second way that we can go about creating this look or something that you might be able to do. And this is if you have uh, kind of outline stamps or something like that. Uh, these ones here are bold stamps and solid stamps, and these ones are outline. So I am going to do these, and I do not have coordinating dies for these, and I'll show you exactly what I do so that we can use these for this gorgeous floating heart technique as well. Now I'm just going to pick out two of the different sizes of flowers and then both of those gorgeous leaves up the top are going to work well for this. I pop each one on an acrylic block because I really only needed to um, put, do this once. I don't, if I wanted to stamp this out lots of times then perhaps I would have used my stamping platform then but I know that I just need to do one sheet of these so I pop them all on some little acrylic blocks. Then I'm going to stamp these all out in some VersaFine Onyx Black ink. This is a beautiful dark black stamping ink and this is a pigment ink so it's going to stay wet for a little bit. Pigment inks are perfect for embossing and they also are perfect for stamping. They often give a fantastic impression without having to put too much effort in at all. So I'm stamping down two of the large flowers, two of the small flowers, and then just as many of the um, leaves that I could kind of fit in here, there, and everywhere. And I don't have to hurry through this. As I said, this is pigment ink, so it is going to stay wet for a little bit. Now you do not have to add embossing powder to this. You can definitely just let these dry by themselves, or if you would like to quicken the process, you could use a heat gun. But what I prefer to do, particularly when I'm going to do some coloring then I'm going to add some clear embossing powder over top of the pigment ink and that way it is going to just create a little glossy shine to it which I think adds to the project as well and it just means that I cannot smear the ink underneath no matter what stage of my project I am at and as I said, I did have a little helper uh, on my knee at this point and he was getting closer and closer to the action and he was desperately trying to wave to everybody, but it's a little bit confusing just because I have all of the cameras overhead of me and everything. So it's confusing as to where he should wave to uh, so he can see himself in the little screen. So he did a little wave there for you. 
I filmed pretty much this whole video with someone at least one on my knee uh, if not one on my back as well <laughs> and at times uh, one of them was also doing her own creations to the side of me so I definitely had my little helpers uh, busy today but they enjoy it they enjoy just hanging out with me as well and they often do their own little projects to the side of me um, and just really enjoy chattering away which is lovely that they can join me and I love it that they love what I'm doing as well now I decided to use my zig markers which I have not used in a long long time and if something is in my craft room then I want to make sure that I'm using it. Um, I have a small craft space and so it's important for me that things in here get used and if I'm not going to use them then I should pass them on to somebody who will enjoy using them. So I love my zig markers and there was no particular reason I hadn't used them in a long time but I just thought I would pop them out and remind myself they are watercolor markers and they blend beautifully on on Bristol smooth cardstock but this is the Tim Holtz watercolor paper and they also blend beautifully on here now the uh, Tim Holtz watercolor cardstock is much easier for me to get a hold of um, and I also have it in, in my stash already because it's my go-to watercolor paper it's the only one that I have um, so it's nice and easy for me to pull out now I just add two, I only ever do two colors and that means I can use one to use the base color and then one is a little bit of the shading and I just go back and forth until I am happy. And then for the colors for this project I am going to use some oranges and yellows and then some pinks as well. This one is going to be fairly bright. So I'm just going to add a little bit of ink in the center and then I'm going to color up the top and then drag down the color um, so that they mix together and are going to create a really nice little ombre look in the middle so there's several different ways to do this and uh, I'm no expert but this is just how I do it so I put the bold color down the bottom color in the top and then I start to go down over that more bold color and bring it up just a little bit so I can smooth out that ombre look sometimes I did a few little flicks as well just because I think that adds some nice texture to the petals so I'm going to quickly whip through this. I'm not going to have you here sit here and watch all of the coloring. I'm going to speed through this part. I did do uh, some of the orange and then I used uh, a yellow pen to kind of uh, make that little ombre effect for this one. But other than that, I'm going to speed through this and uh, save you the time of watching this. Now when it comes to these images, I am going to be fussy cutting these ones out. I am fussy in choosing what I want to fussy cut. I like this stamp set in particular. I was drawn to it because it means that I it has lots of kind of straight edges and not too tricky to uh, fussy cut out. Now there are two different ways that you can do fussy cutting. This is the first way here where you leave a little white border that goes around. This kind of looks a lot like how uh, it would turn out if you had die cut these out and it leaves that little white border or you can stick right on the black border and have no white outline at all and most of the time if I'm fussy cutting I am going to choose to have no outline at all no white outline but I do think that leaving a very small white outline is probably the easier way to do it and if you're not confident in your fussy cutting it does leave a lot more leeway so either either is going to look perfectly fine for this technique but just for this one I chose to go right up next to the black outline so I am going to uh, fussy cut out all of these as I said these are nice easy strokes for my scissors to use to do and I always use the cutter bee uh, little scissors for all of my fussy cutting I love these ones now this is the bouquet builder from Altenew this is a little ephemera pack here and these are kind of pre-made die cuts I guess and this is if you don't have to do any stamping any die cutting these are all of the ones that are available that came in the pack I actually did a whole video on using this pack and how to create cards using this using the ephemera from these sets or using ephemera sets in general not just this pack but I have some more left over so as usual I am wanting to use these up now there are a couple of different options depending on what you have there is masking magic from Jenny K on the left which is my favorite all-time masking paper or I have a roll on the right of the four inch low tech tape which is the mint tape from scrapbook.com both of these are going to work well I'm going to show you both of them uh, just so that you can see exactly how both of them are going to work but essentially you just need a low tech surface to do this um, and I these are the two that I have available in my stash for me to use 
So I'm just going to get a little bit of each one out and I'm going to start off by using the mint tape to show you how I'm going to use that one. And we are going to create these floating shapes. Now I chose to go with a heart today and I'm going to start off using my fussy cut images. So I roughly have my die there so that I can guide myself and kind of put it over top to find out where I need to fill in gaps and spaces and things. So this is... Um, obviously, if you do this, then you can create a positive and a negative, like the inside of the shape and the outside of the shape. If you just filled up a whole sheet of this and then die cut in the middle, that would be really fun too. But just for today, I decided to create the heart shape. Uh, so I'm not kind of doing a two for one deal. And what all I want to do is place these face down. And <laughs> it would be ideal at this point if I had more of these images to add. But I don't and I colored all of this and I cut all of this so I'm not going to be wasting these so I will cut some in half and as I said I'm just using my die for a guide and I'm able to fill up all of those spaces because I want all of these images to be as close together as possible to fill up our shape and I'm just going to pop all those extra pieces here there and everywhere to make sure that the gaps are as uh, small as I can create them now obviously I this video today is showing you that you can use whatever you have it doesn't matter whether you have ephemera whether you have die cuts that you've already done you could use plain black die cuts on a stark white background and you could do no coloring at all I mean you can use anything whatever you have we can make it work um, and this video is just basically giving you ideas of how you can use whatever you have in your stash um, so I did have to fiddle with this one a little bit as I said it would have been probably ideal if I had another flower or two um, but I didn't and I'm going to make it work so once I have the shape I take um, the couple of pieces of low tech tape that were holding that down now remember that the sticky side is up here by the way um, and so that is what my little um, shapes there my little flower shapes are stuck down to now I'm putting the die the right side down so it's going to die cut into this and then run it through my die cutting machine and then I have a perfect heart shape come out that is all filled up now this is stuck to my cutting plate um, just because obviously that is low tech tape so it's tacky and I just gently take it off it doesn't stick too much it's the perfect amount of tack this is my favorite low tech tape and I have one of my options ready to go now moving on to the next one I'm going to do this one with the Gina K masking magic this one is my favorite masking paper to work with you don't necessarily need it for this uh, you more tend to lean towards using this for um, ink blending and things like this because it will not bleed through using this but these are some of the shapes that I created using the leaf canopy stamp set and I die cut all of these out there's kind of two different types here it seems to be kind of the dark and the lights so I decided for this one that I wanted to go with the light colored uh, leaves that I had created and those just gorgeous uh, tones two to two tone kind of shapes that we created using that faux layering look and then I was just trying to figure out how best to pop these on and again I'm using a very very similar process where I just pop these down and fill up that masking piece um, and I am going to put them face down remember and then I'm going to cut little pieces off so that I can fill them in as much as I possibly can with having as little wastage as I possibly can and then once I think I've got everything all fit together I will run this through my die cutting machine again and then this will be number two and just making sure I've got all those little gaps filled up and then for the third one we are going to use the ephemera now I had very little choice left at this point I didn't have a whole lot left in the packet and I think by this time I had already made three or four cards uh, from this set here so this was just the leftovers um, from what was left so I didn't have too much choice but we're going to make it work just fine there are some of those flowers that are all the same and quite a lot of greenery now because where I ended up putting my heart die I ended up with lots of greenery in this one and when it came out I wasn't too sure that I had uh, <laughs> what I had created but I went with it and I really like the end result for sure so here I'm going to do the same thing tack this down and then this is going to be the last one that I run through my die cutting machine and then we are going to put these all together as I said I am really sorry about the length of this video it is very long but I promise once you see the results of these cards they're absolutely gorgeous this is one of my favorite techniques now at this point I am ready to go and kind of start putting everything together 
This is one of my favorite parts. It kind of feels like the big reveal. <laughs> so the only other thing that we have left to do is I have gone through my little foam um, stash here and I have some foam dots, I have some foam squares, I have some foam roll, I have some foam strips. I am just going to use up all my little leftover bits and pieces and I am going to pop a piece of foam, some sort of foam, onto the back of each one of these little die cuts or um, die pieces here, whatever they are, fussy cut pieces, die cut pieces, and make sure that every single one is popped up and this is going to give us the most gorgeous dimensional effect ever. So I have got my cards here which are four and a quarter by five and a half inches, so these are my card bases. And then I'm just deciding, I want a few of them, I thought I may as well do all sorts of kind of different ones. So I just wanted to go with three different kind of looks for these cards. So I'm going to start off by peeling off all of the release paper on the back of this one. This is the one that we did the fussy cutting with. And so this one is quite bright and uh, cheerful. This one is going straight in the very middle. This is with the mint tape, so I give it a good press down to make sure all of those die cuts are adhered down and that foam tape is stuck there. And then I slowly peel this uh, paper back and this is one of the great things because I know it's not going to rip anything. That's the reason why I love this low tech tape so much and we have this gorgeous dimensional heart on the front uh, with our fussy cut images. Now moving on to the next one. This is going to be the one with the leaf canopy um, stamps that we stamped out, the nice solid leaf stamps and take off all of those release pieces at the back there and I'm just going to speed through this because uh, same same and then this one I decided to put off to the left a little bit, I wasn't sure whether I should go left or right but for this one I went left and then press it down really really nicely and then for the last one I'm going to decide to pop this one off to the right just a little bit, as I said just something a little bit different just so that you can see three different designs using basically the same uh, shape and the same technique. Of course you could do any shape. These could be stars. Uh, I did think about doing a really giant star and then filling it up with little stars. <laughs> I had that idea in my head which I really liked as well so that would be a fun one but as I said any shapes are going to work well here. I just chose to go with hearts and I'm going to add some different sentiments to all three of these so that you can see how versatile these are as well. So press this down really really well. And then same thing with the Gina K masking magic. I have never had this rip my project either. And that is uh, one thing that I would hate to happen at this point. That would be terrible. So uh, for me, it is worth using some good quality masking paper or masking tape or low tech tape for this because you do not want this to rip at this point in the process either. Now this one is really, really gorgeous. This is one that we hung off to the left hand side. And just because this is straight down onto my card base, I'm going to flip this over and cut off just that little bit of excess. I don't feel too bad about that, um, but I just cut it off so that it's nice and flush. These are my 9.5 inch Tim Holtz scissors, and I love that nice big long blade to get a nice sweeping cut, and it gives me a really straight, crisp edge. And then this is the final one here with the um, ephemera pack. As I said, we ended up with a whole lot of greenery in the middle. And when I first saw this, I thought, hmm, that wasn't quite what I was planning. But actually, in the end, I really like this look and it's absolutely fine. Right, now to finish off each of these, I'm going to stamp out a few quick sentiments. This one here is from the Leaf Canopies, the same stamp set, and I love this one, sending lots of love. I think this could be uh, useful for all sorts of occasions, and I do love a good kind of generic a sentiment that you can put on the front and then tailor the inside of the card to the recipient. I'm going to stamp this one out on a little small heart that I had die cut. I thought this might go nicely rather than just being a sentiment strip, just something a little bit different and gives a little bit more um, to the front of the card, given that these are so clean and simple. Then I have these sentiment strips too. This is from Altenew as well and this is going to be stamped out that says welcome to the world sweet baby boy because one of these is going to be a new little baby card for a friend of mine and uh, I love love this little sentiment. I don't know why but this one is one of my favorite ones to use uh, for new additions to the family. And then for the last one, I stamped out the Happy Birthday from the Word Fragments stamp set as well. This one is one of my all-time favorites. I absolutely love the stamp set. And then I'm going to cut those out and get them ready to put on our hearts as well. Now you could mix and match these and these could be used for so many different occasions 
But for this really bold and bright and beautiful one, I decided that the happy birthday one could go straight on the front here. So I'm going to use some liquid glue. This is the Ranger Multimedium in the matte finish, and this is going to go right in the middle. And it contrasts really nicely because it's that white with the black outline. The black I've already used to stamp out the flowers, and the white is already in the background, and it stands out nicely because of all those bright colors that we use. So that is one of the cards. Not quite finished with these ones, but this is just going to be one of the final steps then I am going to add a little bit of foam tape to the left hand side and then keep the liquid glue on the right hand side of this little heart and that means it will sit nice and even with the rest of the foam tape that we added um, behind those other floating pieces as well and then pop this down sending lots of love I thought this was the perfect kind of pastel colors uh, for this little sentiment and then as I said, I'm not quite finished with these, but this is just the next stage in my process of adding all my little sentiments. I'm just trying to make sure that this is perfectly lined up and relatively even. Um, just eyeballing it, of course, I usually don't measure anything. And then for the final one here, this is the little baby card. Again, I'm using some liquid glue with a little bit of foam tape uh, for that little bit that's hanging off the edge there. And that way it keeps the card nice and even and nicely supported. So a little bit of uh, liquid glue. And then just to finish these off, and this is definitely optional, you could stop here if you wanted to, but I'm going to add a couple of little Nouveau drops to fill up some of these little gaps and just here, there, and everywhere. You don't have to do this, but these are very simple cards, so I think that tiny little bit of shine in the middle here on this card is going to look really nice. This is a really, really pale blue, so I don't think it takes away um, from any of the stamping or any of the creating that we did, but I really like this look nonetheless, just adding a little bit extra to it. You could add some gems you could add some enamel dots you could add nuvo drops you could add color drops anything that you have is going to work here as well then for the other two i did add some nuvo drops to one of the other ones but these are the three finished cards we are done and dusted i hope you have found this video inspiring and i will leave a list of all of the products that i have used and that are still available in the description box below this video Please let me know what you think of all of these three techniques and I hope that you have found something that you are able to use similar in your stash at home and you give this technique a go because this is gorgeous and fun to create. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you in the next video. Thanks, bye!